Oh, that potential. And it's not used. Brothers and sisters, my name is Adarius, and welcome to the review of Transformers: The Last Night. So, the Transformers: The Last Night, or just T5. So, T5 starts out with that you get a glimpse into the past because, of course, it's the past. Um, no, no, I'm I'm gonna wait with this. I'm I'm gonna carry on here. So, movie starts out back in King Arthur time, where you find out that there was this twelve. Transformers knights that have crash landed on Earth and Merlin uses them to win the fight. Now this is important, and why? This is important. So we cut back to our time and something has clearly changed. First of all, there's this huge wasteland where dead Autobots and Decepticons live because the entire population of Earth or at least the governments have decided that all Transformers needs to get offed for some reason well then again for all this shit that have cost in the last few movies then makes sense but you get this feeling that this is a, a, some kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland where you need to fight for survival but it turns out that it's just a quarantine zone this is okay actually but it's here you meet this girl that you have seen from the trailers and her role in this movie is absolutely nothing Ab Nothing at all. She provides with nothing. <sighs> we then find out that Mark Wahlberg's character is trying to help Autobots. After they've been shot down from the sky, he tries to give them first aid and hides them in a junkyard because he believes in them. I don't I don't know. He then finds this artifact that gets attached to him. And this artifact is important. But is it though? No. He then gets this information on that there's an impending doom coming and we need to do something about it. And he gets this information from Anthony Hopkins' character, who's probably the most fleshed out character in this movie. We then have this treasure hunt where Mark Wahlberg's character and a female lead, I don't quite, it's just a sex object for fuck's sake. They need to try and find this special staff because for some reason it holds the power to repair Cybertron even though I'm pretty sure Cybertron got destroyed in the third movie but uh, who's keeping count. But they need to find this before Cybertron for some reason floating around is trying to come to Earth because they need the scepter to repair it but by repairing it it will destroy the Earth. So we can't we can't have that happen. So here's our movie. Now, does that sound confusing and a bit boring? <laughs> you watch the damn thing. Okay, the first thing that pissed me off. Uh, now, no, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the good things first because you know then it's a bit of a happy time before I get to the deep shithole. There's the grub. So the thing that works in this movie is, firstly, the humor has been toned down. There is quite a bit of it in the beginning but you further you come into the movie the list there is of this classic michael bay poopy fight jokes humor that he's known for and that i actually enjoyed and it's it sounds it sounds strange if you enjoyed that there wasn't fight jokes in the movie but doesn't that mean you enjoyed that in every movie you watch yeah to some extent but when it's in that michael bay movie then it is a huge deal but they are there the jokes are there and i are bad as shit is yeah 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 but but that was a good thing another thing is that some of the action scenes some of them are actually quite entertaining especially in the last act there are still big problems with that but i'll i'll get there and the story that's and Tony Hopkins' character presented was actually quite entertaining, and him and his butler robot was actually a 
quite a joy to watch. It's, I don't know how, but it seems like Anthony Hopkins know how to make the shitty scripts and the shitty directing of Michael Bay work. It's not it's not perfect by no stretch, but compared to everyone else, it's actually quite good. And then the lastly, I will say that the effects are fucking astonishing. But then again, that's what you kind of come to expect from an, uh, a Transformers movie. But then again, visual effects can't save a movie. But yeah, it's if you just, you know, switch your brain off and just enjoy it, it is entertaining enough to watch to some extent. Because you have to keep in mind, this is a two and a half, two and three quarters hours of a movie. Yeah, you know it's 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 funny. I th- I thought I have more positive things to say, but nah, nah. Let's all right. Let's let rip this shit apart. Okay, the first thing that pissed me off, and yeah, it actually pissed me off, is the continuity errors there are. And you might go, how can they fuck up the continuity? Okay, in the third movie, Optimus Prime kills Megatron. Spoiler alert. And then in the fourth movie, the last one, we found out that. The humans try to make their own Autobots or their own Transformers and they use the head of Megatron. And by doing so, they created Galvatron who had Megatron's essence, but he wasn't Megatron. They stated that in the movie, he was Galvatron. And when he transformed, it was that shit that they used. In this movie, however, you have Megatron. And he doesn't look like Megatron, but that makes sense since Megatron is dead, but we should have Galvatron and not Megatron, then what the fuck just happened? I mean, it was the same team that made the former four movies, so... Uh. And then you have small Dinobots babies in this movie that are only there for kids? I don't know. But where do they come from? How does that work? You you, you not explain that. <sighs> but then again, that's, that's not an important gripe. Oh, oh my fucking god. If you haven't seen the trailer, Bumblebee can detach all his limbs and then reattach them again. Does that mean that you can't kill him unless you hit his spark? And if that's the case, doesn't that make him the most powerful transformer there is? And how come uh, she's the only one who can do this and not anyone else? And how did he learn this thing? Well, you're not told. You're not told. That's not important. Explosion is important. Boom! Okay, so you get that shit out of the way. Then the next thing you're gonna think about is, okay, let me get this right. So we learned in the first movie that Megatron went to Earth to find the Allspark. And there is no history documentation of interaction between humans and the Transformers since that what Wiggy grandfather found it in the Arctic. There haven't been any correlation with each other. So, so you have that. Okay, and we find out that modern technology comes from Megatron. In the second movie, we found out that 10,000 years ago, there was this fallen one who tried to harvest our sun. And then 5,000 years later, he made the pyramids to harvest the sun. But then again, there's no documentation of them being there in any religion or, or any culture or anything. That seems strange. And then you find out that in the third movie, we had some Autobots that somehow knew where the Allspark went, just like Megatron. But they crash landed on the moon. And we went to the moon to find out what it is, but it wasn't documented. And it's somehow we didn't saw that they made a connection between them and Megatron. And, and then in the fourth movie, you find out that the dinosaur age was ended. The dinosaurs were wiped out by these seeds that the trans- some Transformers came here to Earth to throw down. And the dinosaur age, it was, you know, ended 65 million years ago. So why did they come here to drop these seeds on this planet that they didn't knew? They only came here because of the fucking Allspark. <sighs> Now I get to this movie that's back from uh, 1500, maybe 1200 years ago. There was these 12 Transformer Knights that helped King Arthur to win his war 
by giving him a special scepter that they use to create life and can be only thing that can restore Cybertron, but they don't go to Cybertron to use the fucking stick that they have had and all the time. So they can... And how come no one knew about it? You you heard that you found out that Cybertron was dead, but the Allspark could not just you know create a new army for Megatron, but he could also save Cybertron. But you're not going to use that. Then you have Energon that possibly could save Cybertron. And then you find out that they have these pillars that you can draw the freaking planet back to Earth. But but why would they bring it back to Earth? Because you didn't have any slaves back then. To holy fucking shit, man! It's like that. Writing all this piece of shit with no thoughts behind it, and they're not keeping count of what they have done already and where the timeline is and how this fits. <sighs> okay, that was a big of a rant. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, this, this just pisses me off. But okay. Okay, fine, fine. Then you have this interesting aspect of Optimus Prime going to find his makers to make them pay. And I thought that idea was quite intriguing because you gotta wonder who made the Transformers. They established that someone made them, so you can who made the Transformers. It turns out it is a woman robot. Was that a spoiler? You didn't see that in the trailer? I'm sorry. But yeah, it's a woman robot. And she brainwashes Optimus Prime so he will go against his own kin. Oh, we got some Fast and the Furious 8 thing on our hands here. <laughs> no. No. Optimus Prime is not in this movie very much. I will say he's in this movie maybe 15 minutes. And you might go, well, in normal movie, that is quite a bit. Yeah, but this is a two and a half hour movie, so no. And he was even on the one on the posters everywhere, but no. Okay, so Optimus Prime skimp comes back to Earth and does something and then him and Bumblebee fight. And you have this chance to make this an emotionally fight between these two old friends. And it is over in two minutes. So he's probably a bad guy for, let's say five, five minutes. And that's it. Then why make him bad? If you're not gonna use it, then why the fuck do I... <clears throat> So you have this long, slow movie where there's not many th action things going on. Oh, Bob. By the way, I know he's not going to watch it, but Jeremy Jans, damn you, damn fucking you. Jeremy Jans said that this movie is recorded in normal 21.9, I believe, format and IMAX format. That's not what pisses me off. But he, in his review, said that during the action sequence, you can see the format changing all the time. During an action sequence, not just doing the action sequence, actually doing the scenes. It meant that I was aware of it happening, and it happens so often. It happens often. It just goes like this. Hey, you, are you all right? <sighs> yeah, that was a close one. Okay, we need to fuck these Decepticons up. <sighs> yeah, you're right, man. Are you ready? I'm ready, man. Boom! And it just keep doing that all the time. <sighs> he made me aware of it, and now you are. I'm I'm sorry. Not really. Not really. Okay. So then you get to the last fight. You have, as I said before, I, I got on a side track. So I said before, you have this long, kind of boring movie where you have this treasure hunt that they don't utilize enough. It's just go here, go there, done. Um, you have this forced romance on Mark Wahlberg's character and the woman lead, but there's no chemistry in a romantic way. It's just something awkward, and then at the end, mwah, the kiss. Oh, fuck you. But you have that, and you have some characters making stupid decisions where they just stand around and then they get off, and you're supposed to feel sad about them, and you just go, no, that you had that coming, you know. Go for cover, man. Either that, or you just meet a character, then they get off, and you try to make this emotional scene with emotional payoff, and just again go, you know, I haven't seen any connection between you two established, so... Meh. But you get through that, and you get to the final fights. And often, I th I think, personally, that the Transformers deliver a good final fight. Sometimes they can be drawn out and boring, yes, but at least they deliver on something 
big explosion thingy and they try to do this on this movie you get to the boss fight you just you get you get to the boss fight you know in in the first one you had optimus and megatron fighting at least for quite a while in the second one you had optimus prime fighting megatron and the fallen one for at least quite a while in the third one you had optimus fighting the other prime i can't remember his name <laughs> Megatron, at least for quite a while, and in the fourth one you had Optimus fighting Galvatron and that Spig Ops dude, I can't remember, the robot, and he used the kicker, at least for quite a while. But here, it's done in 10 seconds, maybe. It's just floating a bit around and then Optimus go, and the person dies and they don't even build... And that's another thing. You have two and a half fucking hours, maybe more, and you don't even build up your villain. You don't give it attention. Don't make us either fear the person or go, I can see where you come from, why you're being bad. It's just, this dude is bad. Just so you know, bad. Hate them. Just, and that seems to be the only thing that Michael Bay can do. There is at no point where he actually managed to make you feel anything for any character at all. For me personally, the only time he actually made me feel anything for any character was in the third movie when I thought Bumblebee was going to die. To, yeah. to me, that's the best one, if you ask me. There, it, it had its flaws, but the humor was toned most down there, and it seemed like there was more focus. I guess it's because it was supposed to be his final one, and he wanted to go out with a bang, and then he made the fucking fall. Okay, as you can hear, there's some good thing. I mean, if you kick your legs up and you don't have anything to do for two and a half plus hours and you don't expect anything decent, <laughs> then yeah, you can you can actually enjoy. You just need to get through the first half an hour, maybe the first hour, and then it becomes more focused of a movie, but there's still this... It's another thing there wasn't actually that many explosions now think about it or action sequences and it was, it was quite weird i mean it is a big movie has he gone soft besides the point besides the point <laughs> but yeah it's a funny thing i actually thought i was gonna give it watch it on netflix my experience because i was entertained ish about it I didn't thought I wasted my time that much, but it could be that I was watching it with my girlfriend and my friend. I don't know, but as it was with The Fate of the Furious, the more I talk about it, the more these things aggravate me. Would I watch it again? Yeah, probably. I mean, I have the other four Transformers movies and just go, Bay ruined my childhood. No, he didn't grow up. You still have your awesome childhood. He just made these shitty movies but they don't have anything to do with this awesome series, you know? You can just never watch these movies and your childhood is fine. I do find the first and the third one quite entertaining and I think that they did something incredible for visual effects and the complexity that you can make these transform... Transformations. You know what? There's not even that many transformation in this movie. Oh my god, the shit just piling up. Ugh. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Here it is. Transformers The Last Night is a waste of time. <sighs> yeah, I should probably just have watched The Mummy again. <sighs> so there's a new rating for you. Okay, so Transformers The Last Night, have you seen it? Did you enjoy it? If you did, good for you. Please comment what you liked about it or if you don't, <laughs> if, you, if you hate it, you could comment all you hate about it. Or you can just comment anything additional you have to say that I haven't touched about it. But it's up to you. But yeah, did you like it? Did, don't, you, don't you like it? Which is your favorite movie of the Transformers series? Of the movies so far? Mine is third. And unless that we actually get a new director for this series, I have a feeling that will always be my favorite. Maybe you have another favorite. Maybe you just think that all of it should just be set on fire and thrown out anywho whatever you think comment below and let me read your thoughts and as always until i see you in the next video remember stay awesome
how bad is it that specific brims makes better transformers movie than transformers i can't fucking 